one of their direct questions because then she has to leave. I just want to uh, respond to um, the two people, um, the gentleman and the lady at the back there, who um, uh, raised concern about um, the act of um, um, killing the baby or whatever you want to describe that. I'm a midwife and I've been a midwife for 33 years. And so, you know, I have committed my life to um, and have loved my uh, career as a midwife, um, minding babies and mothers and all of that. And um, what the point that I would like to make, you know, two points I would just like to make, is that, number one, the Eighth Amendment simply has not worked. It hasn't worked in preventing abortion. And that we have to understand. Um, because whatever situation women are in, if they make a decision for whatever reason that they need uh, uh, to terminate their pregnancy, uh, for those who can, they will find a way to do it. And the situation we are in at the moment in Ireland is that we have untold numbers of women not having backstreet abortions, having bathroom abortions. And this is something that, you know, it, it's, a, it's a very real issue. It's women's lives are being put at risk and we're relying on uh, the Eighth Amendment to uh, somehow ban uh, them from doing this. And essentially, at the end of the day, it's not effective. And all it is doing is putting those women's lives at risk. But meantime, while it's not working, the lives of every other of the 70,000 babies that are born in Ireland each year are actually paying the price for that uh, the Eighth Amendment that isn't working. So on the one hand, it's not working, it's not effective in banning abortion. And then on the other hand, all of the unborn babies are actually paying the price for, um, for the Eighth Amendment by virtue of the fact that the mother's voice, the person uh, who, you know, is the number one carer of uh, uh, the baby, is uh, their voice is taken out of the equation. And this is what is, we've really, or we've really got to begin to appreciate the consequences of that. And one, just one, just to make reference to one of them, the evidence that we're, that is coming out today uh, we have, for example, a shocking figure here in Ireland of 30% of women uh, suffer from postnatal uh, depression and post-traumatic stress disorder. And the evidence uh, for uh, the evidence that's underpinning um, these statistics is that, that a key factor that is uh, um, of vital importance to women in the in, in labour and birth is that they feel that they are in control. It's not about how they give birth, it's about simply feeling in control and feeling that they are a part of the decision making in their care and but it's, it's so simple. You bring that out of it, women are traumatised as a consequence, uh, they feel they're coming out the other end of childbirth, they are shocked, they're left in, 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 you know, emotionally traumatised by the whole thing and this again is a consequence of uh, denying women's rights and decision making.